Hey there, so in this video we're going to look at the reactions of enols, enolates, and other types of nucleophiles with carbonyls and analogs, so the aldol reaction and more. So we've already seen the ways in which enols and enolates can be nucleophiles. We've seen, for example, with the halides that we get monohalogenation between the enol and the strong electrophile, the halogens, like chl a chlorine. We've seen between an enolate that we get uh, and a halogen that we get polyhalogenation. No reaction between the weak enol and the weaker alkyl halide. But we do get a, a good uh, an SN2 type reaction between the enolate and an alkyl halide. So the mechanism is going to be really similar when we now look at the carbonyl type electrophile. And just like before, we don't get any reaction with between the weaker enol and these uh, weaker electrophiles um, unless we activate them. So we will be seeing many situations where we can activate those carbonyls by protonating them. Those enolates can react directly, being strong nucleophiles with these even weaker electrophiles. So let's look at some specifics. So there's one central challenge with the aldol reaction, and it's a question or a challenge of selectivity. So imagine that we have a base in the reaction and it deprotonates. Imagine that we choose a strong non-nucleophilic base, and so it deprotonates that quantitatively, driving that equilibrium to product side. Okay. Just to help us out a little bit, we can color that. And let's make this other one into a different color here. Okay, so if you follow along in the reaction, at this point that nucleophile can react with the delta positive part of that carbonyl electrophile. So that's the main part of the aldol reaction. And those pi bonds have formed that new carbon-carbon bond. So here's where the challenge though in selectivity comes in. All these molecules are mixing all around together and so that enolate when it reacted might have reacted not only with that blue ketone, the diethyl ketone, but it could alternatively have reacted with another molecule of the di, uh, dimethyl ketone or acetone. So instead of just the one aldol product forming, it could have formed that other product. But the problem is actually even worse than that. So if we go back to that starting point in the starting molecules, and we mix that base in that solution, how do we control for the fact that the base removes one alpha proton over the other alpha proton. And maybe you were already asking that question. Knowing about the differences in pKa, there'd be very little difference in, in pKa between the two. And so we'd really get a mixture of all these products.
when that new enolate forms, it again could react with either of those electrophiles. So what a challenge. Not only can we form two different enolates, but each of those enolates could react with either of the carbonyl electrophiles. So each one can form its own two different products. And so if we wanted one of these product products to be the major one, at best we would get a 25% yield. So chemists have come up with ways to make this reaction more selective. And we're going to look at the two major approaches. So approach number one involves the selective formation of the enolate. So that happens in a first step. And then a controlled addition of the electrophile. So that's what we're seeing in steps one and two here, with a third step just serving to neutralize the final product. Okay, in the first step, lithium diisopropyl amide, which we've seen before. So that strong non-nucleophilic base quantitatively deprotonates that carbonyl, the alpha proton, generate that enolate. Once all the molecules have been tr transformed into that enolate form, then step two happens. So the electrophile was not in the solution at first, it gets added afterwards. And when it adds, there's only one electrophilic carbon then present. Okay, so we form that new carbon-carbon bond. There's the O minus that we need to neutralize then in step three. So that's the idea behind step one. First to generate the enolate, then to add in the electrophile to make that carbon-carbon bond, that's the key part of the aldol reaction, and then to neutralize the final product. So let's look at method two. So instead of a stepwise formation, in this case we have to, we can only choose very specific substrates or reactants where there's only one enolyzable proton, which means only one spot where there's an alpha proton. If you notice, all the other alpha carbons don't have any protons on them. So there's one enolyzable proton, and one carbonyl is more reactive than the other. And so here it's to know that, remember that aldehydes are more reactive than ketones. So when we add in a base here, again, we generate the enolate. An 
And as we generate that, that enolate is going to react with the most electrophilic species present in the reaction mixture. And so that's going to be the aldehyde. So we've made a new alpha carbon to carbonyl bond. And in this reaction, I'm doing this particular one with ethanol as the solvent. And so as that alkoxide forms, that O minus, there's, that's going to be completely surrounded by ethanol. And so it's quite readily protonated. to give that aldol product. Now in this case, the reaction is not finished here. And we'll look at what kinds of situations to know when to stop or when not to. So this is known as the aldol product. Next in this reaction, we still have base present. And so certainly that base could deprotonate Certainly that base could deprotonate the alcohol and go back to the alkoxide form. That's an equilibrium, that is happening. The other thing that can happen is a deprotonation of the alpha carbon again to generate the enolate. And then the next step actually resembles the collapse of a tetrahedral intermediate. And in that way, I mean that the lone pair on the oxygen pushes down, repels the pi, bo pi bond. Those electrons travel toward this hydroxyl group. That hydroxyl group, through electronic repulsion and through stabilization, hydrogen bond stabilization with the ethanol in solution, breaks away. Okay, so a bit like the collapse of the tetrahedral intermediate in that there's a repulsive effect that allows even a bad leaving group uh, to leave. And it's also stabilized as it leaves through hydrogen bonding with the solvent. So this is known as the aldol condensation product. So it's essentially an elimination product. And it also produces hydroxide. And when that reacts with ethanol, it ultimately ends up being water. So that's where the condensation part comes in. So how do we know if that condensa condensation step is going to occur? So how do we know that Ultimately, that proton is going to be removed, and we're going to, after a couple of steps, get to that elimination or condensation product. So generally, it'll happen if the solvent is protic. That's what we saw in the last example with ethanol. The conditions are acidic, because that makes a better leaving group. It'll make water as a leaving group instead of hydroxide, and with heat or more time.